Hey guys, it's Rich, our Jemathan Timber Frame Company, main timber framer. I've been making some clapboards with a wood miser jig. I had to figure out a few things myself. I've watched a bunch of videos and there were a few questions that were unanswered. So I'm going to take a couple minutes to make a video. I'm actually going to make a couple different videos, but this one is just setting up this uh, jig so you you know how to use it and you know what's going on with it. There were some other videos and I think I'm going to give you a little bit more detail to make it easier to set up and better to understand. All right, let me move the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so when we look at the jig, this is this is the jig. Mine's an old one. Here's the model number on mine. So it's an older one. Some of these now come two pieces, you bolt them together. Okay, pretty straightforward. I mean, let me scrunch this down a little bit. There we go. So this is the lever that goes up and down. I want to point out something real quick here. So this is the cam roller that's lifting and lowering the cant as the cant is on here. So when you look at it, when it's in the low position where the cam is not touching, that's actually the tilted position. This position, when the kit, when your lever is up like this and your cam is in this position, that's actually the straight position. So make sure you got have that basic understanding. You can barely see my laser uh, right here. So you can see it's pretty well level, but you know, I've got some cuts in there. So I'll show you that in a second. So when you set this up, that's what you want to look at. The second thing is, this is your stop button for this lever and when you bring this lever up you're bringing up this cam you want to make this setting you don't you what you don't want is you've got to come beyond the halfway point of that fulcrum on that on that roller if you if you leave it in the middle that's what can happen the lever can spring back and it can fall during your cut so when you set this stop make this go just beyond the halfway point so it won't allow this lever to arbitrarily fall down. Sounds simple enough, but that's what it is. All right, when you're setting this rascal up, uh, make sure these bolts down in here, let me see if we can get at them. Okay, these bolts, all, all four, all eight of them, you want to have them loose. And here's why. Let's watch this thing work real quick. Get the camera set up. Better camera angle and a longer arm to rip reach the lever so when you lift it up you can see that that's moving and what you don't want to do is pinch into this with the bolts as it's trying to move and tear up these uh stainless steel pieces okay now the next thing i want to talk about are these stops so uh, so mine are painted orange i think on some of the new ones they might look like they're aluminum colored okay so let's put the lever down in the down position watch what's going on here as that goes down, you'll notice that this whole assembly is touching off on here. If you were to jack this down in that position, that's going to lift this side up and it's going to reduce the amount of angle you have on your clapboard. So if you look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise it up again because I want to show you something. So if you look under here, you can see this space right here. That's what that screw adjusts when you're in the down position, where you want to be. So you can use little shims like this to put in there to make sure that this side, and then when you adjust your other side, that they're, that they're at the same height. Or you could be like me, is you could drop it down, which is what I've done, and I just have the screw, this screw head here, touching off on this and then I've set it up the same on the other end. So now now I know that it's lifting up the same and it's setting down the same. If you don't have these adjustment screws at the same height, you're going to get a twist you're going to get a twisted uh, clapboard when you saw. So that's something you want to set up. All right, so that's the basics of the setup. So going through it again real quick, when you have this when you set this fulcrum up, and you've got this stop, bring this stop back so that this is just beyond the halfway point this way, so that way it won't fall down like that while you're soldering. Okay, so that's, that's something. Consider using shims like these if you want to adjust the angle of your cant. Frankly, I've got it full angle with no shim and just having these screws touch off, or you can adjust it as you want. 
All right, so that's a basic setup of this rig. Uh, it's working pretty good. Here's what some of these clapboards look like if we can get in, zoom in, and look at them. So these are 3 16 on the small end and 5 8 on the big end. Just about what you buy at the store. I think what you buy at the store is half inch and then 1 8 on this end, and I wanted them just a hair bigger. These are 6 inches across. Oh, yeah. One last thing is I've got an MP100 plane. So what I did is I planed this side here. So if you look down the, this side, and I did it on both sides, plane both sides, and what you'll find is this clapboard, the, the edge that lays is straight as an arrow, which is kind of nice. So when I go to lay those things, I've got a nice flat edge. All right, so that's some basics of the setup of this jig. If you have any questions, uh, Send me a note, click like and subscribe. I'm going to do another video and I'll show you on the AccuSet 2 what I've come up with for the settings. Uh, I reached out for some help, got a little bit of help, did a little bit of figuring on my own, came up with something on that. All right, that's the clapboards. I'll, uh, I'll do another video on the settings on the AccuSet 2. Hope this works for you. Click like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.